Everybody wants to know. We were gonna smash out the side wall. Generating toilet. I want kids like right now. I never wanted children. But, but what really happened was there is another side of me that's super scared. Times where we didn't have a roof over our head. So you want to know what we bought in Baja? Everyone, Bella and Crystal will be doing Q and A today. <laughs> Good morning, everyone. Good morning. We've decided to do a Q&A. Coming to you from our bed. We've just opened our eyes, bed head and all. They can see that. Last time we did a Q&A, so many of you loved it. It was one year ago. It feels really good to address your questions and speak to you directly. Especially when we've been so confusing lately for so many people. <laughs> <laughs> I've never read these questions, so. Explain okay. your timeline away, train Bahamas, Colombia. Okay, this is a good one. We left the cabin around December. Early December. Six or something. And the goal was to spend time with family. It's the holidays. So we hit up the holidays with the fam jam. And then after that, Bella, Izzy, Jasmine, and I, and Jasmine's mom all went south to Florida. For a whole month. It was really nice. Jasmine's brother and his partner came down yeah. and we had lots of great family time. And that was like our home base. Um, Bella and Izzy were loving their retired life on the in beach. Florida. <laughs> we were actually in Pensacola for the first time. Yeah, the Gulf Breeze. It's very beautiful. While we were making trips outside of the United States to the Bahamas, to Colombia, the and train, Baja. Baja, like all of these trips that we were making. We were leaving from Pensacola. It might look like we were away from the girls for the entire however long, but we weren't. What happened in South America? Oh wow. <laughs> We're gonna do the big questions before coffee eh? <laughs> We set out on, and we had- A mission. A mission. A determined y'all. But, but what really happened was, is that our mission failed. <laughs> we <and> failed hard. <laughs> we didn't find a vehicle and we should have probably called it sooner. We were actually there for two weeks, mm -hmm. um, although it may not have seemed like that. And a lot of days waiting like palm trees. We could have kept that part out of the video of us looking for a car, but then we just wanted to kind of tell the story as it was. We still do want to travel South America. It was never, we said this in the video, it was never intended to be full time. I'm still actively looking. We learned a lot on where to look for vehicles, how to buy them. Tired? Am I boring you? And a lot of you were like, why don't you just ship your van down there? To be honest, to ship a vehicle down to Colombia, Argentina is like, it's starting at six grand American. So that's like 10 Canadian. That also doesn't account for anything happening. That's like if the plan goes perfect, which it never does when you're shipping a vehicle. There's always holds at uh, what are they called? Ports. Ports and all of that. We were really just looking for an adventure. We love to travel and we would love to do the Pan American route. I was mm -hmm. even considering a motorcycle at one point. I'm happy that we put out a video in the beginning of the year as well saying expect the unexpected. What happened to the podcast? We love we the podcast. We answered this in that other video too. Did we really actually answer it? Yeah, this remember. is at the end of the video. Link it right here. Watch it. So it can look different. Maybe it won't be weekly. Maybe it'll be a different schedule. Why did you choose Nova Scotia and not to be closer to family? Thank you to BetterHelp for sponsoring this week's video. Therapy has helped me see a silver lining through some really challenging times. It's helped me find the tools to navigate personal things like complicated family issues. And it really feels so good to talk to someone openly about what I'm going through outside of my inner circle, a professional. I've noticed every year therapies become more normalized and more relevant in all of our lives. And I love to talk to people about it. All of my friends that I've spoken to who have experienced therapy have had such good and transformative experiences. It's done such good for everyone, I know. If you want 2024 to be a better year, we cannot recommend therapy enough. And BetterHelp is the perfect place to get started. If you go to our link, betterhelp.com forward slash vanwives, you can fill out a questionnaire and BetterHelp will use your answers to match you with a therapist who understands what you're going through. For your therapy sessions, they offer video, phone calls, and you can even text your therapist, whatever is the most comfortable for you. If you're experiencing low mood, anxiety, stress, or anything like that, therapy can help. 
Over 4 million people have used BetterHelp to start living happier and healthier lives, and we want you to too. Click the link in the description or go to betterhelp.com forward slash vanwives for 10% off your first month of therapy. Ultimately money, I'm yeah. gonna be 100% honest. Our budget was really, really small, and when you're looking for property in Canada, certain areas, like anywhere, are hotspots. We couldn't afford close to family. Not we just went to where our budget allowed us to go, which was the more affordable provinces like Nova Scotia. Now as we're older and we've obviously changed and grown up and kind of want some other things in life, I'm always like, oh, that'd be easier if I were home. For sure. Home, meaning back in Barrie. Not in Barrie. I would never live in a city anyways, but back in Ontario. <laughs> closer close, to family. Closer. But in Ontario to get this type of land and this remoteness and privateness? Private, privacy. Private, privacy. But in order to get how private our land is, you have to be like eight hours north or six, and it it just doesn't exist anymore. You put the good ones first, eh? These are the good ones? I like it. I There's know. even better ones. Oh. <laughs> how do you divide your time in the week building, filming, editing? I don't know. I'm still trying to figure it out. Definitely something that we're still working on, actively trying to have more balance in life. Our blinders are slowly coming <laughs> off from each season of the cabin and we can see life a little bit more clearly now. Probably should get more balance, but I'm happy. And I think everyone's balance looks different. But if you want to know like the time frame, because it was like building, filming, and editing, right? Yeah. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday are for build. Mm -hmm. Friday is... I just disagree with that. Because it never works? Yeah, I don't know <laughs> like what you're... I don't even think we could ever say that. Every single week is so different. That's why it's hard for us to say what every single day looks like. And what work. I think the key yeah. is like flexibility. When are you finishing the spare bedroom in the cabin? We actually just ordered everything for <clears throat> it. So you're in luck. Ding! I'm happy we took our time because our new plan is better. <laughs> and it's way different. Honestly, Part of the reason we don't do things is because we just don't know. Yeah. There's we, so we many know. different ways. One time, we were gonna smash out the side wall and do an extension. Next one, I was building a hallway. Next one, I was building a small little entrance. Yeah. And it's gonna be actually more than a spare room. We're excited for that project. Yeah, I can't wait. I'm really excited. Hey, coffee. This is how we get going. Cheers. A little Q&A over coffee. How do you keep your battery bank heated while away? And I wanna group this in with how do we leave the homestead for extended periods of time? We were just gone for two months. How do we do that? I will first wanna pat myself and Crystal on the back and Bella and Izzy because it took us a long time to get here. Three whole years, right? Yep. Yeah. But we are finally at the stage where we can leave our homestead, which is a great feeling because it is a sense of freedom. Leaving the cabin for any a period of time was really hard. Yes, so we have three sources of heat. However, when we're not here, we rely on our propane heaters. We use the Martin heater 20,000 BTU without the glass thing. These heaters are so efficient. We set them the lowest they can go. And it just keeps it at like a very minimal temperature in here, obviously above freezing, just to keep everything seven to 10. Dry and not frozen. <laughs> yeah. And for the workshop, that will always be the case. We will always run that propane heater when we are away because of the batteries in there. So it, it is super ideal for off-grid living. Yeah. We have our neighbors walking in and checking on the property, having those fresh prints and activity here is super important. We have cameras that we can monitor the cabin from our phone um, to keep an eye on everything. We also have the Servo, the Victron Servo, which allows you to monitor your battery percentages while you're not here. From remotely. anywhere in the world. Yes. And temperature sensors that you can monitor from your phone. What happened to your indoor incinerating toilet? Like it's, it's actually bizarre what happened everyone. Like it's us from the future. I didn't want to talk about the toilet in this video because we do have a video coming up where we talk about our situation in depth. And we install our new toilet in the cabin. However, what we will share is that not long after installing our toilet, it did stop working and it would work very sporadically. We had trouble contacting the brand and we actually had a very terrible customer service experience. And for the last 10 months, we've gone back to using the outhouse. How did you get started securing the cabin, tools, et cetera? Over the last three or four years out here, we've been just been like, okay, we need a clearing saw in order to literally get to our cabin to get rid of more of the ticks and yada, yada, mm -hmm. yada. We would make money with working on YouTube and then we'd put X amount 
or its tools to help us with a job. Without hesitation, we would just get what we needed for the next job to make the next video. Like it was never like, I was never like, oh, let's just put this away and save it. No, it's like, let's go get that tool so we can do that job. So by living in a van, we obviously didn't have a mortgage, we didn't have rent, we didn't have any really overhead bills other than diesel insurance and we shared a phone. Someone reminded us of that the other day. I forgot until, I like blacked it out until someone reminded me. Yeah, Yeah. that was a major compromise. I mean, it's like, you save $100 a month and we lived in a box, so you might as well share yeah. a plan, right? Not really though, looking back, like... <laughs> <laughs> it's really nice to have your own phone. <laughs> would you ever do a meet and greet? 100%. Yes, yeah. I, I would love to. I think what we need to figure out is where... California. And would we have to do many? Like, who lives where, in what big city? I I'm... think it's just you look at where your demographic's mostly from. It's mostly from California, so I'd probably mm -hmm. do it in California, so the majority of people could come. Mm -hmm. What would you say to 18-year-old Crystal and Jazz? You're gonna do nothing with your degree, save all your money. <laughs> <laughs> you are doing the right thing by ignoring what everyone else wants for you and just keep doing what you're doing. I think you need to elaborate on that. I wasn't ready to go to school. I wasn't ready to settle down into a career. I wasn't ready for the traditional steps. I wanted to just do what I wanted to do. I wanted to travel, explore, and see things with my own eyes and do things with my hands. I would say, Hell yeah, girl, you're doing the right thing. <laughs> That's yeah. what I would say. You're Just keep doing you. <laughs> you're world schooling yourself. It works out. Or maybe to like go hang out with your mom and your grandma more, 18 year old Jasmine, because you live at home. Like that might be my answer. That's cute. Bring us to Baja. Hey, we made it. <laughs> Here we are. Bella this even came. Cheers. Cheers. Everybody wants to know. This is turmeric water. I'm definitely not <laughs> drinking it. Is the Baja Mexico property just for the winter months? Yes. <laughs> Although, to be honest, I really do like winter. So I can see myself like flying back in like February or something just to come hang for a week or something. For sure. I think like for some reason, Nova Scotia winters seem to hit like February, March. So, I mean, we don't want to miss it. As you all know, we love yeah. winter, but I think we also love Baja. So if we can do both. Ideal. And how that would happen, like the logistics behind it would be, my mom already said she's moving in, so <laughs> she's just staying in Baja for the entire winter. <laughs> At least three months, she said, so the idea is- Don't blame her. <laughs> the idea would be <clears throat> that she would look after the dogs, we would come fly back to our cabin, the homestead, enjoy the winter a little bit. Or we just drive back a little early. Winter's fun in periods of time. What prompted the idea of Mexico? I'm probably gonna give you a funny answer, but it honestly is just the feeling I have in my heart when I'm there. We've spent a lot of time in Baja. Some of our new viewers may not know that when we were living in our van, we went down to Baja twice with Bella and Izzy and all four of us loved exploring the peninsula. It is super beautiful. It's still very wild. It's fun and there is community there. There's a lot of reasons that drew us to Baja. Since the very first time we experienced Baja, we really did have this feeling where it was like, this feels like a home away from home, you know? Yeah. And so that kind of prompted the idea of maybe we buy um, land or a small casita down there and do what we've done here, there. Anyways. My hand is cold, can I blow it down? Yeah, you don't need to drink. And we didn't know when we went down this winter if it was gonna work out, if we were gonna find a property, but we did and it's real and I couldn't be happier about it. Yeah. What's the future plan for the cabin with your plans in Mexico? I think a lot of people initially thought that we were leaving the cabin and the homestead behind, that we were either gonna sell it or forget about it. And everyone was like a little bit emotional about it because this is a big change and everyone is very attached to the cabin. We are too, we love the cabin. This is our home, it really is our favorite place. We built it with our own two hands. We've created so many beautiful memories here. We could never just leave it behind or abandon the cabin and Baja will be our winter plan and we will upkeep the cabin for the majority of the year and through the winter, we have a solid plan now. New build in Mexico or fixer upper? Well, we don't like to make things easy, do we? <laughs> new build, baby! It's a new build. Complete custom. We are going to be picking up a lot of bricks. Will Bella and Izzy be overwintering with us in Baja? 100%. This is another reason why we are drawn to Baja and we love Baja because the border crossing is easy. The drive is easy. You can get there by land. You don't need to fly. We love a good road trip. The four of us will pack up 
and head down for many months. Bella's joints are gonna love it. Yeah. My mom's joints are gonna love it, sorry. <laughs> I didn't expect you to be back at the cabin so quickly. Why are you back at the cabin? Buying property doesn't just happen overnight. Obviously, we went in Jan beginning of January to property hunt. It, it just takes months. By the time we take ownership, it's going to be May. And we will be showing you how to do it, what went into it, and everything. The, and the place as soon as everything is finalized. Yeah. We are very close to the finish line, but we always like to take our time. So once we get there, we will share it all. All right, bye Baja. Construction plans. all about us. Last year we did a Q&A and we got very personal, opened up a lot. So we're going to try to not answer the same questions over and over again. But this one we want to answer new questions, but we know there's new people here. So yeah, click that one and watch this one, but click it after. How long have we been together? Seven years. Kids in the future, do you want to get pregnant or adopt? Damn, I want kids like right now. Like if I could push one out of my womb right now, I would be doing it on this bench. <laughs> oh my God. I never wanted children, but I do now want to have a family with Jasmine. And that changed probably a year ago, maybe. I used to not want to have kids because like a lot of reasons. One being like the state of the world, two being it's obviously much harder for us to have kids. I just think, We've built such a beautiful life, and I it would just, be amazing. Yeah, we would be amazing moms. Like I would. I'm love not it. like tooting our own horn, but like I just see us <laughs> being like such good parents, mom and mama. And I don't know, like the way you parent Bella and Izzy is like one of the best qualities in you. And I just you. would love to see you do that to a baby that we kind of create together. One thing that does stand out to me is like I can't wait to give our children a life that. I didn't have and I didn't get growing up. Also, I wanna keep it really real. Does it scare me a lot? Yes. I am not certain in my decision, but I don't think you ever are. And like, I'm not gonna just sit here and be excited because there is another side of me that's super scared. In actuality though, as much as I want kids like right now, then my logical brain comes in and I'm like, no, not exactly right now, but in the next couple of years for soon, sure. Soon, for yeah, sure. Yeah, for sure, really soon. Yeah. And we don't know what that's gonna look like. Like, of course we're saying like, we hope we can have kids, but that's if like, we actually can. I don't like, know if I can, yeah. We don't I know. would be down to adopt though too, like anything, to be honest, like. It'll be fun. Yeah. Are we monogamous? Yeah. Yes. Do you ever fear telling someone your partner is a woman? Yes. Yes. Many We've times. Had unfortunate experiences. When we're traveling, I feel like I refrain from showing and telling people verbally that we are together only because I don't know where I am or how it's going to be perceived, especially when I'm in another country. I think that could happen anywhere though, like even in Canada and the United States, you yeah. just don't know how people are gonna react. And so for the most part, I usually conceal our relationship. I love- For safety. For safety, of course. And I love <clears throat> being able to say it so confidently and share it with people, but that's just not always, there's not always an opportunity for that. I used to like not even want to hold Crystal's hand in public. Like I was probably the more scared one. And now more than ever, I feel like I've come so, like so far. That's why I don't want to say like never. Cause I actually feel like it's something I've been working on. Yeah, it's true actually. When people assume that we're sisters or friends, I get really fired up and I will straight up look them in the eye, dead eye contact and say, Jasmine's my partner, right? Like yeah. I, I'm not gonna, like if someone's gonna make an assumption at me, I'm not gonna sit uncomfortably in it. Like obviously unless, it was an unsafe situation, but I, I do get like, I, I do love to share it in a, like whenever I can, of course. Yeah. How did you know you loved each other? Who said it first? One night when we were finished <clears throat> chasing waterfalls, we came back to our home city, Barry, and I think we stopped a little bit before that. And I just remember my heart like actually beating out of my chest and I never felt that before. Like I thought I was having a heart attack. We were like living heartbeats. It was like <laughs> so, beautiful i had never experienced anything in my life so strong and emotional and passionate i feel like we knew we loved each other because we could be doing absolutely anything we could be absolutely anywhere and like her and i were always on the same wavelength <clears throat> we enjoyed each other's company so much 
and yeah. we had a lot of the same wants in life, a lot of the same passions and interests. Values, morals. It's like they, we just like, they just met and they were like, everything that, you know, I was, she kind of was and everything she was, I kind of was and we were just like. But then we were also so stuck. different too. <laughs> As much as we were stuck, we also have so many differences, but like those differences like make us keep like, climbing like the same mountain. I honestly just knew that I, I loved you because I knew that I didn't want to spend a single day away from you and I knew. That's why you're a U-Haul. <laughs> way to make a cute moment into a joke. I can't sit here anymore. <laughs> like I can't breathe or see. How did your relationship change over the years? We can start with like all those feelings that we had and those probably lasted the honeymoon stage over a year to a year, I would say. I don't know if that's normal. I don't know if there, it's meant to last like 10 days or a few months, but it felt like it lasted like an entire, it was an entire year. Yeah, and we actually just talked about this the other day, which is kind of funny because Crystal was like, yeah, and then they just like disappeared. And I was like, disappeared, girl? And she's like, oh no, 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 I mean dissipate. And that's something that I think happens in a relationship is obviously those, that's not normal feelings to have like for that long or just your whole life. And it's not realistic. And I think a lot of people get a little scared when those things disappear like, or when you only get to experience them once every few months, but that's the reality of you're doing life now, right? When we met, we were just like so wild and young and in love and we are that now still, but it's just, we've gone through so many different eras. I think change is super, super important because it wouldn't allow us to move through life if our relationship didn't change over the years. So I'm very proud to say that we have moved forward together through the changes. And one thing that's remained the same and hasn't changed is our love for each other. I love ya. I love you too, What annoys you about each other? You can go first. No, you go first. No. Do you have one? Hmm? You don't think I have one for you because you're perfect? Yeah, fine. <laughs> Tell you're, me. you're a perfect life partner, literally. And Tell I know me. you don't like that because I know put you on a pedestal and you have to act a certain way, but like, there ain't much. Okay, I'll tell you. <laughs> what annoys me. When you eat with your mouth open, it annoys me to no end. Yeah, I like enjoying my food more. And I've tried. Okay, I gotta be honest, your organization skills really <laughs> annoy me. <laughs> there you go. I left this Q and A in her hands to deal with it, to write all the questions out because I don't want to see them. <clears throat> and honestly, she, her entire note deleted. Even though I pay for a program that you can literally color coordinate everything, and nothing will delete. I I just don't get it. And then if you look at her notepad, she doesn't even put titles. <laughs> she just it's a okay. Moving on. Your answer's a little long. Organization now. is awful. Okay. Yeah, how know. much do you fight in real life? Often we have arguments. It's real life. Yeah. <laughs> but our videos are also real life. So yeah. like there's a lot of things in our relationship that are deeply personal that we won't share online. For respect out of each other. And our relationship. And so that's the reason why we wouldn't include that in a video. And yes, it does happen. So that is a good question because you're probably wondering because you don't see it. I, I think to sum that up, I would just say like I'm in your head. We're like avidly working on fighting better. Yeah. Communicating better. Which is, no, fighting better. You can't eliminate fights for the rest of your life. The reality is, oh. is like, you need to learn to fight better. Like, how, how to eliminate it. Oh my <laughs> gosh. I don't have a button. <laughs> how to eliminate the intensity of these things or like. Reacting on emotion is like right. one thing I am working on. It's a short walk here in the summer and the winter is a big one. So much snow. Welcome to the other cabin. We're down here at the abandoned cabin that is connected to our land that we have shared in two videos so far. And we're here because we have a few questions to answer about it. Do you have any plans for the second cabin by the lake? It is such a big, beautiful lot. And it's so close to home that we know we definitely have some exciting projects here that will allow family and friends, more family and friends to sleep close to the cabin. There's a lot of wind right now. There's a lot of wind down here. Because we haven't narrowed it down to like what we want to do first or where we're starting, we're not going to say yet. Yeah, but I don't coming, be flaky. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but coming very soon and this summer, we are going to begin down here and we're super excited to yeah. start because these projects of this size and this excitement really fire us up and we're They're pumped. really cool. Like they're really cool. Yeah. How will you avoid burnout with both properties? Burnout? I think we're in the best place ever compared to what we were before. Like we actually have a whole functioning 
homestead. Yes, it's not finished, but like we have all the modern day amenities to live really comfortable. We're no longer living in a construction zone. If any, we haven't been burnt out, but if we ever would have been, a hundred percent it would have been renovating the cabin yeah. last winter for sure i also you know I mean? know that this question is not just about this property i know it's also about combination of the cabin this abandoned lot and then mexico being able to go down to mexico for a few months will actually help us avoid burnout i feel like yeah it's just such a nice place to relax in the winter and although we plan on working and building every time we come back we come back more motivated more energized more yeah. ready to give it another go all right you ready for the random are you going to australia the problem with australia is it's a 24-hour flight yeah it's far it's really far and not saying that like we can't do it but if i had to come back home for a personal reason um it'd be a long journey and i couldn't get there really quick as quick as i would want to sorry i don't really feel like talking about it but that's all i can give you how do you deal with long distance missing family and missing home i cry I cry. <laughs> yeah, it's true. It's really sad, um, especially during the months where like we don't really have a lot of visitors. But yeah. we were just with them. So like I also I'm trying to look at it as a positive. I feel like I've seen my family and friends more than I have in a long time this year. I think we just make the what we do to deal is like keep in contact. We voice note a lot. We love voice notes. Send videos. Videos, photos, just like really letting the people in your life know that you're thinking of them, even in the most simple way, like a text. And just like making plans in advance, you know, what, even if it's a year away, being like, okay, I'm going to go home and just like make that happen. Yeah. Like, yeah. You just got to make it happen. My cousins have babies <clears throat> and I really need to go meet them. She hasn't even met them yet. When I know. are you going home? Make a plan. Um, as much communication as you can and as much <clears throat> planning as you possibly can to see them, I think is super important and helpful helps deal with it yeah but I don't think I'll ever get over it yeah it's not it doesn't go away do you have any regrets in life no you not that I can think of there's nothing so severe in my life that I regret because I've learned from everything that's that I want to say I would regret the best and hardest thing about building something from scratch figuring out how to build it the first portion of building something I always look at it like you're figuring it out then you're like like figuring out what materials to get how to put those materials together. And then the other thing would be like the middle of it. I just think like that part is the mo is the hardest. Something I did struggle with a lot in the beginning that I'm kind of, I think better at now is like um, being okay with maybe failing. Or not looking not like 100% perfect. perfect. Yeah, that's the hardest oh, thing. Oh yeah, our beams, that's 100% the hardest thing. Crystal was going off, I was like, Crystal, we can only do thing things as good mm. as we are qualified to do it. Our like, skill set. Our skill set, like in anything in life, like you're only able to like chug a water bottle as fast as you can chug a water bottle like it can be that simple yeah, right yeah so i do struggle with and perfectionism I, a little bit when we were doing the beam she was going at it and i was like chris like we're gonna have these gaps like but we're just gonna have to fix them with wood glue or do something so i just think being okay with if you're gonna do something diy yourself it's not gonna look as good as the carpenter who's been doing it for 50 years the best part is looking at it and knowing that it was built from scratch with your own two hands, with your noggin and your skill set. I just think it's like such a special feeling that actually you cannot put a price tag on. I would say the best part is obviously that as well, but being able to do that job for someone else at no cost, just do it for them. Now you want to have any floor? Um, a lot of people ask this. Crystal's family, question mark. <laughs> I know I don't show my family in our videos and I don't really talk about them. I grew up in a single mother household, Jasmine did as well. So I really only have my mom and I have a relationship with my brother. Um, I've never lived with my brother. He was much older than me by like 10 years. Growing up, my childhood wasn't always easy there was some really hard times like times where we didn't have a roof over our head there was some challenges that's like goes back on the regret question do you regret like if you could have changed your childhood you know what i mean but like it made you you totally like you are the strongest human being i like i know like you will just make anything work and you'll take if you're given something you'll just take it and you'll run so <laughs> i know i'm crying too <laughs> honestly shout out to single parents i don't know how you do it but just tell your parents or your guardian or whoever that you love them. 
As I'm watching this back, I feel like there's more context I need to give. My mom separated from my father at a very early age. My mom also didn't have very much family at all of her own as she spent some of her childhood in an orphanage. At the age of 40, she met her brother that she didn't know that she had and I want an uncle. We loved him and sadly he is no longer with us. My mom and I have a pretty private relationship which is why you haven't seen her on our channel. She's really gone through so much and come out the most wonderful person. She's the sweetest soul. And this kind of leads into the next question. Someone asked why I was in the Big Brothers and Big Sisters program. That program was so huge for me. It was a huge part of my life for so many years and it's something that one day when we settled down near a town or a city, I definitely want to do. I was in that program because my mom put me in the program so I could have more support in my life and experience things that maybe she couldn't bring to the table. It allowed me to go new places, try new things, put myself out of my comfort zone and have a relationship with someone else um, other than my mom, my main caregiver. And so Meredith, who is like my best friend and my big sister from when I was five, is still a huge part of my life today. Wedding. We have, she's like, yeah, she's my best friend. She's like everything to me. Um, You're I was in her wedding party. I was in her wedding party this past summer. Like it's such a special relationship we have. So I could not speak higher of that program. It is so special for, for children. That's First, we learned how to dance, catch it fresh. <laughs> such a cute photo. I love it of you. How did you take the leap of breaking away from normal living to living alternatively? Okay, I'm gonna have to thank my mom for this because I wouldn't say she did anything normal by <laughs> the time she was 16. Let's be real. She's always been like an independent fighter. I watched her create three businesses on her own as a single mother and work three jobs. So I never felt the need that I had to, like she never made me go to school, talk to me, like she said, yeah, if you want to. And I, I just would say I thank my mom for like showing me that there's other things you can do in life other than working like the nine to five. You were given the ability to allow yourself to explore different avenues and you didn't feel like you were breaking away necessarily. It no. just felt like you were doing what you were doing. Yeah, you always brought that up. Like how did you just like not go and teach? Like how did you just like move into a van? And I obviously have been reflecting on that. You just wanted it more than anything else and you didn't allow influences to influence you. I didn't really have a traditional life to begin with and I feel like I was mm -hmm. always kind of chasing the opposite of traditional so it kind of just fell together to be honest. Yeah, what do you have to lose? <clears throat> School's still there if I want to be a teacher. If you are okay with failing, that whole thing, if you're okay with failing, that leap is a lot less daunting. Five and 10 year goals. Oh man, <laughs> I, I know in five <laughs> years we're gonna have a family. Yeah. I hope and we're gonna be married, I hope. And I never liked this question and I, for once, actually kind of like it. I think it's because it's something that you actually have to think about long term. Oh yeah, cause I'm gonna be 35 and I gotta get making babies or freezing my eggs. And I hope in 10 years that those five-year-olds are real nice people. <laughs> they will be with you as a mom. No, um, in all honesty, like we usually don't think into the future very much at all. I just hope I'm still healthy and happy and I see my friends and family a lot. Yeah. <laughs>